Good morning, everyone, everywhere. Uh, I would uh, ask you to stand wherever you are, at home or wherever you can, if you can. We're going to read together a text for today from Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and common, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and thank you for your love. And Lord, we know you have something for us this morning and you're going to work through your servant. I ask you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins that I would not be a hindrance to your word and let everybody else and including myself be hearers of your word and doers also, Lord, and that uh, we may not be uh, just uh, listening and not, not doing. We count on you because we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. Is my sound uh, good? Okay, good, I'm hearing myself somehow. Uh, The title of the message this morning is The Weightier Matters of the Law. The Weightier Matters of the Law. First of all, I want to say something about the law. You and I, you would agree, Paul says, the law is spiritual. First, the law is spiritual. And Paul went to say, if we walk in the spirit, what happened? we are not under the law if you walk in the spirit the best way i can explain it it's like even paul again he says hey there are people who don't have the law but they are naturally doing the things of the law it's like people some people are not in church they don't hear the messages we hear, but you look at their behave, behavior, it's like they behave better than people in church. And that shows that the word, the law of God is written in their heart. So I'm saying the law is written in their heart and they're doing naturally the things. Okay, so this is why Paul says the Jews is not the, the flesh but the Jew is the one who keeps the law, okay? And uh, another way to put it, we live in a country and cities that have so many laws. Do you guys really know all the laws that there is in, in, in your cities? We know they, are, they exist, right? And sometimes it's until you get in trouble, they pull it, and then you say, yeah, you're under it. But obviously, you have the stop signs, for example. You have the traffic regulation stuff. The, we know uh, a lot of them. And some of them do it naturally. Some of, them, some of us know that we, we just have the common sense. We just should not do this or that. Okay, and if you happen to do something that you never heard of, whatever, you go to court, the judge will figure out, yeah, he, was, he really did not know. He may, he, they may charge you for it, they, they may not, but they will consider it. That's why you have the first offense, second offense, etc. But when you come the second time, the third time, <laughs> You know, things change. So I want you to understand that the law is spiritual. So when we, the law, obviously, it's the word of God. But the word of God is not when you take the scripture. That's not just to look at it, to say, it's black and white. It's right there. 
Okay, but is it here? Is it in our heart? And is it living? Are you doing it? Okay, that's one thing I wanted to do with uh, tell about the, the law. Now, the objective of this message is that you know they are priorities in life. They are things that are more important than another. And that's include even in the law, even in the Bible. They are things that come first and second. And if you put uh, the, the last before the first, it doesn't work. Things must be in order. A few months ago, I think probably a year ago, I saw a chart. Maybe my wife bought it from, from the hospital for, for diet. Me, 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 our daughter had to lose weight. And it, this chart was laid on the kitchen, and I look at it, and they say, okay, if you eat this, you have to do that. If you eat this, like let's say if you eat a slice of pizza, you have to run so many miles or walk so many, okay? If you drink a soda, you have to do this or this or that. And then if you drink water, you pretty much don't have to do anything, right? <laughs> and if you, if you eat vegetable, you don't really have to do, to do much. And I look at it, I say, my goodness. Then why do I have to eat a slice of pizza if I have to do so much work after that, which we know we don't do, right? Not only we don't do, we eat not one slice, because if they say that for one slice, you have to double the work after you eat the two, two pieces. And, and it's just, and you look at it, you know, weight and health is difficult, it's a complex thing, but do you know it's not really that complex if we do the right things? If we simplify it, you know, I like uh, reading about America because I wasn't born and raised here. But one thing uh, I'm going over is uh, uh, the history of fast food, you know. And uh, they show you the difference, they have different uh, clips of pictures or videos to show you what it was like before fast food. And then they show you clips after fast food. There's a huge difference, huge. And then now you see what they're trying to do now. They're trying to reverse course. They're trying to turn the fast food into healthier food stuff. And you know it's easier to prevent than to heal, right? It's taken a lot of work. But out of all the things that we do, I have my brother-in-law who was mad about, he has to work hard to feed his children, and then they become obese, and then he had to pay money to get them to reverse again. So it's, it, you pay to feed them, and then now you're going to pay to starve him. It's just, you don't know what to do. And all it is, is just eat, eat properly and exercise. Isn't it simple? But we don't do it. And we, we do the opposite, and then we work hard after that to make things right, which is very hard. Okay, I know it's difficult, I know it's hard to talk about, but it's exactly what we do for the spiritual body, for church and ministry. We just do things the opposite and make things hard, and really Paul says there is a simplicity that is in Christ. It's not so complicated to live for Christ. So we are concentrating on everything else but the essential. Everything else but the, 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 the essential. You see all the programs and all the things we're trying to do and, and everything, you know, uh, all we had to do just we 
eat right and we exercise. And that would diminish so much trouble for us. So this uh, verse we read come from uh, Jesus Christ talking to the, the scribes and Pharisees. That's a few days before he died, he get killed. And when I was reading this, I said, wow, I, because I, I look for the definition of woe, and I said, wow, for a, a man who is going to die to talk so hard, I, I would think he would be, you know, more gracious and more, he, <laughs> He looked at them and he was really, really mad. And then he just told him, just curse him and then tell him exactly the way it is. And he, he starts from verse 13 with eight woe. And the first one, he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, verse 13. Hypocrite, ye shut up the, you, the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. You block it for you, and you block it for them. Woe unto you, scribe and Pharisee, hypocrite, you devour a widow's house, and, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater condemnation. And then here we go, you see even in condemnation there is greater and smaller condemnation. You see that, right? Woe unto you, scribe and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one convert, and when he is made, ye make him two folds more the child of hell than yourself. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say whatsoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the goal of the temple, he is a debtor. That's a big deal. Don't touch the goal. And then he told them in verse 17, ye fool and blind. For where there is greater, where there is greater, is it the goal or the temple that sanctifies the goal? It's like your neck or your necklace. Which one is more important? Huh? I know somebody would die for their neck necklace. Don't, don't let their <laughs> would lose their neck. <laughs> and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Jesus called them fool and blind. For where there is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift. Then we come to our woe here. It says, woe unto you, scribe and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of mint and anise and coming and have omitted omitted just erase it not just don't even do it the weightier matters of the law they don't even do it they're so concentrated on doing the other things they don't even do what is the most important things and he said, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done. That's where you should start without neglecting the other one. They should be done too. But I'll go a little farther, verse 24. He says, ye blind guides with strain at a gnat. And I really had to look for this. The strain. Anybody knows what strain is in English? In English, doc, Dr. Willis? Put a lot of effort, overwork. Overwork, like you just overburden. 
Okay, the uh, add, add a nut. What was a nut? What is a nut? A tiny, tiny fly, like mosquito. So before they drink their wine or water, whatever they have, they spend so much time cleaning that so they don't swallow nut. But Jesus said, and you swallow camel. <laughs> Both are not good. Those are not clean animals, right? But they spend so much time so they don't swallow a gnat. But they have no problem swallow camel. <laughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Now he's talking, he's not talking about not cleaning the outside, but if there is one thing to clean, it should be the inside first. Now we read this, we don't see ourselves in this. We, we're pointing fingers to the Pharisees. We probably say, man, they were bad. They were bad. You know, when you read the Bible, you, see, you read Moses and, and, and Samuel and Daniel, or all the good guys, or the good girls, or Esther and, and Ruth. We all see us out in there, right? But when you're reading about the Pharisees and Sadducees, no, we don't see us. We don't see us. But what if we are? You know, I think it's three, four years ago, I don't remember, we were given this book, many of us has this book, uh, talking about the extreme righteousness. After I read that book, well, I read it two, three, four times, and it's a reference book for, for, for me. Do you know we are more Pharisees than anything? If there is anybody we resemble as Christians today, is we are more Pharisees than anything. And we need to know it this way. We can at least know it and start changing. Everything that you just heard here concerning the scribes and Pharisees, we should see us there. We really should. Fortunately, we don't have to argue and think too hard about what are the weightier matters because Jesus said it clearly. It's judgment, mercy, and faith. That's what we should have been doing, right? Now, are we doing it? Are we majoring in those things or are there our minors do we really concentrate and put accent emphasize on judgment mercy and faith or is it everything else but this without these things we have a very very light religion these are the things that matter. These are the things that are uh, substantial. We just cannot offer not having them. So obviously, obviously, this tells us there are things that are more important than others in the scriptures, even though we cannot neglect or not do in, in, in anything. It's like vital org organs in, 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 in our body. Can we live without heart? But the heart itself is at us? 
No. We need your lungs, right? We need our lungs. So if you go to the doctor and then uh, you have foot problems, you have hand problem, you have ear problem, and you have a heart issue and lungs issue, guess where the doctors will go first? Of course, they will need to keep you alive first, right? And then take care of the other things. And if they are part of you who must go, they'll go, but they'll keep the heart pumping the blood. Okay? So it's the same thing too in the spiritual realms. Okay? First, for those who may not agree, the Bible itself says to obey is better than sacrifice, isn't it? So you may, in the Bible, you know, talk about sacrifice. You have to make sacrifice for this, for that, right? But to obey is better. So you think you can just go ahead and do whatever you want, disobeying the Lord, and then now every uh, once in a while offer huge sacrifices? It's like uh, we come to church on Sundays, but during the week we don't do the things of God. We woo to people, we show no love, and we show no compassion, nothing. And then you come to church, oh, you come just to praise the Lord. You, you, do you think, uh, no, no. What we believe concerning the deity of of Christ and his works is more important than our millennial views, like when he is coming, how he is coming. So are we going to argue about, okay, no, he's coming, he came already, or he's coming after uh, this or that? I mean, you're just arguing, but the point is, he is coming. And the point is, who is coming, we know who is he. That's most important. I, there are so many things I don't know. I don't have the answers. There are even things I was taught I don't agree with or I don't understand still. But to me, they're not important enough to waste so much time on them and then neglect other things. I remember I used to study with the Jehovah Witnesses, and then uh, we argue about where will the kingdom be? Will it be on earth? Will it be in heaven? And they argue the kingdom is on earth. And truly, I don't know. I don't know. I, I hear the argument. I have my personal views. But Jesus said he is going to prepare a place for us, right? And then he said, wherever he will be, we will be also. So if G I hope Jesus goes to Haiti. That's where I'm going to be. <laughs> if that's where he wants to be, praise the Lord. So really, I don't spend time on arguing and making discussion and then just wasting time. That's the trick of the devil. So there are things we're measuring in. Satan is happy. Satan says, okay, let's keep him distracted. Let's keep him fighting. Because the real thing which is sharing the gospel is not being done. Division is taking place and it works for us. Preaching versus caring. I've tried to pass this on to all the pastors everywhere I go. We really think coming up with some great series of messages, come with so much knowledge about what we know, we have the truth and all that, or whatever, you know, we know, you know how strong we are when it's come to the word. But you know, we can have the most sound doctrine but if we don't care, so which one is more important? Teach the sound doctrine and don't care? Or care first and then bring the doctrine? So you cannot omit 
the caring for the doctrine. The doctrine comes first. It is important. The gospel versus everything else that shows from uh, Luke when Jesus talked to Mar Mary and Mar Martha. You remember the story? I think it's chapter 10. Where Mary was doing all kind of things. And whatever she was doing, she was doing to serve Jesus, serving Jesus. Because she cared for Christ. I don't know if it was, I, I know if it was in Haiti, they would, Mary would call a few guys, go ahead, catch this, this, this chicken here, and go ahead, and while somebody, you know, taking care of it, and send another guy, go to get the plant, plantain, or go to get the everything, like just right there. But Mary seems to be the only one doing it, because Martha, was what she doing? No, that's what Mar Martha was doing all that. And Mary, what was she doing? At the feet of Jesus. Because, and obviously, when you're doing all, all that, you will be tired. And once you start getting tired, you start looking at somebody else, say, what about him? What, what about her? What is he doing? And you start thinking, and you can tell Martha has so much going on and even hatred for her sister. And instead of just going to her, say, hey, sis, can you help me? Whatever, she went straight to Jesus. Say, so Jesus, you don't care that I'm doing all this by myself? And my sister, really, she's not doing anything. Why don't you tell her to come help me? Jesus has the priority straight. Knows him. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, yeah, you are troubled about many things. And that's, they are not bad things, it's good things. And is you even doing it for me? But only one thing is needful. One thing. Do you know out of many, many, many things you're doing, like I say, we are doing as, 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 as church, if we're not preaching the gospel, we're not doing anything. If we're not doing the, 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 the being testimony for Christ, I mean, whatever we do, why do we do it even? Because our goal, our mission is to do what Jesus came for, to save sinners. But if we're just doing things just to build a, a tower, to build an organization, and it's not going to work. Okay? So let's go, let's see the witty, wittier matters of the law, which is first, judgment. If you take a dictionary or go to the concordance, you're going to see the, the complexity of defining judgment. It's really a lot. But I can tell you, I'm convinced the sense he's talking about here is the distinguishing between right and wrong. So we do not mistake evil for good and good for evil. Common sense, good judgment. I remember I spoke here about common sense, and people tend to, once they become Christians, they cannot have common sense. They think if Pastor Ulysses says something, it doesn't matter if it sounds crazy or not, but Pastor Ulysses says it, it's good. You still have your common sense. And you need to use it. You need to question things. That's judgment. And because you're not doing it in a neg negative sense, because I may have judged wrong, and then you may be the one to help me make it right. Because we do need judgment and righteous judgment. Yeah, 
so it's like wisdom. You remember Solomon? He had to make a, a judgment. But sometimes it's difficult. You really don't know. And that's where sometimes you need to ask God, help me. I want to make this right and uh, do, make the right action, but I don't know. You don't know ev everything. But God bless Solomon with wisdom between those two ladies. He doesn't know whose child belongs to who, and he wants to make it right. And then God bless him with wis wisdom, and he finally figure out whose baby was the child, and then he made it right. That's why sometimes we have to pray for judgment. In Psalm 11966, the Bible says, I mean, the psalmist says, teach me God, teach me good judgment and knowledge. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. We really, really should put accent on, on judgment. We want to do the right thing. In Hebrews chapter 5, the writer talk about uh, the time when the Christians should be te teachers, they still had need of somebody to teach them again. And, and in verse 14, uh, talk, talking to them, they are not uh, ready for strong meat. And he says, strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. By reason of use, by reason of use, by practice, you have your senses exercised. It's just, you exercise it so much, it's become a practice. It's become natural to you to discern. Now, the discern is to judge. To judge both good and evil. If we can get that, we make it priority to say, okay, Lord, I want to do the right thing here. Even if it hurts me, but I know this is the right thing. You remember the, the, the man who hired ser, ser, servant? He hired some from 8 o'clock, and then he hired some from 3 o'clock. The 8 o'clock one, he told them, hey, your day you will get paid this amount. And the very last ones, he told them, well, guys, you know, the day is over. Go ahead and work, and I'll give you what I feel is right. So then, when the day is over, he started from the last ones first. He paid them the full day. But he didn't have to, but he felt like that's a good thing to, to, to do. Then the other ones were expecting double or triple of that. Because, they said, wow, if they come just for an hour and then get that much, then when they receive exactly what they agreed for, they get mad. And the master said, why? Why are you mad? We agreed for this a day. So then I gave you what I promised you. So do you see it wrong that I use my goodness, my, you know, to do what I want to do with my... It's the same thing for the gospel. We get saved, some of us, for 50 years, right? And I see some baptism certificate here. Somebody gets saved last week. We get the same wage. We all have the same eternal life. Same eternal life. They're not going to be a, a stage in a hierarchy to say, well, if you, were saved, if you saved 10 years, you have this or that. No, we all have the same eternal life. Same eternal life. So, if we don't do that, 
You go in to worship the Lord and you're going to worship him in vain. You're going to honor him. We're going to do it in vain because you don't do things according to their priority. You remember in Matthew 5, 15, where Jesus called them hypocrites? Because says, these people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. We don't want our heart to be far from the Lord and we're doing things, thinking we're doing it for him. Okay? And then second, he said mercy. Now when we say mer mercy, obviously it's, the, it's in respect to men because God doesn't need mercy from us, is it? No, he does it in mercy for us. But judgment is in respect to the law. You want to do what is right because that is pleasing to God. But when you give mercy, it is really, it's pleasing to God, but in respect to, to men. Uh, I, I even think there is a scripture, the judgment, there will be no mercy for those who have no mercy. No mercy. Brother Jay, isn't it a scripture that talk about that? Like if you are so strict and so tough, so whatever, then you will be judged according to your ways too. Okay. And the Bible says to be merciful as your father in heaven is merciful. Sometimes you see people are so rough, so tough. <laughs> even in forgiveness and the Bible says if you don't forgive the Lord will not forgive you your trespasses sometimes as a pastor you're dealing with issues with people have issues against people you see the heart you just you say oh my goodness now I am talking to so and so regarding a specific issue but now I discover a bigger issue. Is this person even saved? You can, you can tell, you know, you know what I want, Pastor. I just wish this person was dead. So, and not only dead, but go to hell too. <laughs> Be merciful as a father in heaven merciful because the Lord says he desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God is more he wants to desire that more than burnt offering in Malachi 6 6 he says he hath shewed you man what is good and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Shortcut is good or not? But if there is a shortcut that will get you, like let's say if, if, if you're driving, right? If you're driving, take long distance, which I do a lot. Do you find the longest way possible to go? You, well, if it's the fastest too. There is longest but fastest. I probably would get the fastest. I want to get there fa as fast as I can. Okay? So some shortcut is good if it's legal and it's, you know, you can. But... Throughout the Bible, if one, when you're reading now, think, see how much short court there is. One of them right here in Mark chapter 12. I'm going to, you, you know the story is this scribe who came to Jesus and then uh, he asked G Jesus, so uh, which Commandment is the first because they had so many laws, so many commandments, so many stuff to learn and by heart. So he just really asked Jesus for a shortcut type type thing, you know. 
And Jesus said the first commandment is that uh, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thine soul, and with all thy might, mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And there is a second one, namely like this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandments greater than these. Doesn't that show you there are some greater and some smaller? So if you go and do all the other things and you don't do those two, you're missing out. That's a brief summary of the law. If you can love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and strength, and you can love your neighbor as you love yourself, there is no greater things. And then he, uh, in, in verse, verse 33 in chapter Mark chapter 12, it says, and to love him, well, the Pharisee, the scribe just said what Jesus told him. He repeated it. He shows that he understood. And Jesus said to him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. I mean, if you understand this and you explain it the way it is, you, you are close. So that shows us also some people are farther away than others. Okay? But uh, Paul continue in Romans chapter 13, and I'm reading from verse 8 for, for you. He says, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. I feel bad. I owe people mon money, so I, I need to pay so I can owe just love. <laughs> For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. He that loveth Another hath fulfilled the law. Do you hear that? So shouldn't we concentrate our strength on loving another? Because we fulfill the whole law. So I, when I speak, obviously I'm speak to the pastors as as well. You know how we do it, one series to lead to another, to another, but there is no rest, no time for practice. We've been talking about love for so long, but we need to take time to make sure it's happening too. Because if we keep on doing it and doing it and we don't have a, 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 some kind of way to practice it, to apply it in our lives, then we're really swallowing camel. Love worketh all, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore, Love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. That's a great shortcut. Just practice love. Just learn about love. Go around it so, so what it is and practice it. That's all you need to know. Now, anybody knows what uh, article that talks about uh, if you stop, if you don't stop in a stop sign, you get a ticket and how much it is. What article and what? Dr. Willis? But you just know to stop, right? <laughs> you just know to stop, but you don't have a clue where it's written. But when you go to court, your lawyer will pull the, the article and say, this is this. That's what happened to us. Some people really don't know the books and chapters and verses. So when you have love, true love, you don't know the books, the verses, the chapters, but you're doing exactly what it says. I remember the church in Norfolk sent me a, a, a blazer in Haiti. 
and uh, I wanted to, to change the shaft. And uh, I took it out, but there is that cross. I read that book, it says to tap it, to tap a certain point. I spent a whole day tapping that thing, I cannot take the cross out. And I have the manual book. You know, the technical ma manual, I'm following it one step at a time. But when I get here, I, I stop. I could not do it. So I took it down there, that downtown, have the guys who don't know how to read or write or nothing, never been to medical school, no, to, to mechanical school. So they just took that thing, they put it somewhere, and exactly what the book said, they just took a big, huge thing, and they're boom, and it's, it's done. <laughs> By reason of practice, right? You may be ignorant as far as what, where it says in the Bible, but the word is written in your heart, and you love, and you will do exactly what the Bible says without knowing it. And then the faith, obviously, I don't need to spend much time on that. Without faith, it is impossible to please God anyway. Before you can come to God, you must believe that he exists, you know. And we are saved by, by grace. But through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. So if you don't have faith, then... The grace is there. I don't think you can, it, it can apply to you. Okay? And also, faith without works. You cannot just say you have faith and then that's, you only say it. It's not sure. Okay? I'll close with a chapter. We all know what we call the love chapter. First Corinthians chapter thir 13. I'm just going to, to read it. We have just a few verses, starting from verse 1. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, which is love? I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So if we take pride with this church was doing, take pride because they speak tongues of men. They speak tongues of angels, but they don't have love. <laughs> and though I have the gifts of prophecy, though I understand all mysteries, though I have all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could even remove mountains and have not love. I am nothing. We need to practice love. We really do. Love never fails. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. They are not the things to be proud of. They are not those things we need to be proud of and to be seeking for and to be known for. But we need to be known by our love. The Bible, Jesus said, by the love we have toward one another, they will know that we are his disciples. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When we were kids, there are silly things that would bring separation, division among us, and trouble among us. But if you really grow up, you mature, those things mean nothing. I say, you know what, let's not let this 
And as a ministry, as a church, you know the childish thing for us is some of us are so strong in a certain doctrine. And then we fight in that, then that shows how much we don't love each other too while we're doing it. I remember not long ago, I was in my office and a brother came share with me about something that took place a Sunday afternoon. They were having a, a Bible study, the military ministry, and then the Bible study was about unity. <laughs> but it's happened the teacher of the Bible study had a, a version known, it wasn't a King James ver, version in the Bible study to teach the Bible study. And then division the started right there. <laughs> in the, it's, I don't think the Bible said it took place because, <laughs> because the Bible was not a kingdom version. There could not be enough unity for the Bible study to take place. This is what we have going on. This is what we have going on. And then while we're doing that, we don't evangelize. We don't see people saved. We don't exercising love and mercy and judgment. Okay, what is right? What is wrong? And this is what we're dealing with. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest, the great S is charity. To get the unity we need in Christ, I, I told the pastors, first of all, this ministry today is not what it was 50 years ago. Okay? We would swallow or get anything you say and the pastor say whatever. It's not like that anymore. I guarantee you while I'm speaking, somebody is online checking to see uh, all my mistakes, all my flaws. And I have to to listen, uh, there is a brother, I, I, he's not here, but every time I preach here, he would pra practically take me in my ear to drag me to my office to, to tell me what I said wrong. He said, why do you lie this? Why do you say this? That wasn't right. Wasn't right. Or if he didn't want anybody to see me, he would pull me, you know, just <laughs> to, to go. But the thing is, while he's doing that, just to show, to argue with someone you are right, they are wrong, there's you show no love. And you think you're doing it for God? No, you're not. No, you're not. To him who, to who can understand, few words are enough. And I think I spoke more than few words. I hope the Lord will give you wisdom to apply those words in your life for his glory. Amen. Amen.